Howdy guys, welcome back to a new episode of Zaku News here on the US The Gundam TV channel. In case you missed it, we announced a new contest recently, so check out the last live stream here on the channel, or you can check out the new video over on my channel, on Zaku Release, where I explain all the rules and everything for you guys on how to enter that, but it's a Gundam artifact themed contest, and hope you guys will all enter. It's going to be very fun and exciting. The deadline is December 10th, so I'm looking forward to seeing all the different cool stuff that you guys come up with with those little kits. That should be a lot of fun, so I hope you guys check out the information about that in case you missed it. But let's get into the news for today. Uh, these videos aren't coming out very frequently because there's just not that much news coming out these days, it seems like. But there has been a few things, and that's what we'll talk about here today shortly. So number one, they announced a new 1 to 1 scale Gundam. Another one that's popping up. In Fukuoka next year, they're planning to make a one-to-one -one scale a new Gundam, and it's going to be based off of the design of the real grade, actually, which is very cool, but some changes in, a little bit in the colors, especially with the Umro marking on the shoulder, is going to have the Gundam tricolor uh, scheme on it. Instead of just being red, it's uh, red, yellow, and blue, kind of like rainbow. And that's apparently just in honor of Yoshiyuki Tomino, who is, of course, the original Gundam uh, designer, original director of the original Gundam series and a number of different Gundam series. Uh, and he is supervising on this project, so that's why it has that design on there. So we can expect some new models of the new Gundam to be coming out, probably a special version of the real grade, I would assume will be coming out next year. Uh, because this also features a long range fin funnel, so it doesn't have the full set of fin funnels on the back, it has just this one big one, which seems to be there as just like a kind of way to help the the thing stand up, basically. <laughs> but uh, it's a clever way to hide that aspect of the design, I guess, but it's, uh, yeah, a new long-range fin funnel is kind of a new thing. I don't know if you ever have seen that before. It looks new to me. Uh, so that'll be cool anyway. Uh, one coming to Fukuoka. I'm strange why Fukuoka. I don't know, but uh, they recently made a Gundam base there in Fukuoka, and I don't know, must be doing pretty well, I guess. So Personally, the one-to-one -one scale Gundams are very cool, and I'm looking forward to another one. I kind of wish that Bandai would focus their investment on, uh, you know, just making more model kits for us all to enjoy, but yeah, if you're going to be going to Fukuoka, that's something to look forward to seeing if you go there. Uh, but let's talk about some Gundam Base exclusive kits that are coming out as well. These are out this month. The Gundam Base exclusive HGUC Vargil, uh, clear color version. So this was of course a P-Bandai kit originally, now they're coming out with a clear color version of this for 2500 yen. It does look very cool, it's a cool design. And then also the Gundam Base exclusive real grade Zeong clear color version is out for 5,500 yen. It looks very cool. I really enjoyed working on the RG Zeong and I'm kind of tempted to get this one as well. Normally I don't really go for the clear color versions, but this one does look pretty nice. I gotta say the details on that kit are just so cool. It's a really fun kit to work on. So very tempted to pick that one up personally. Now as for uh, some more big ticket items, some more expensive stuff here. You got the Metal Build Justice Gundam coming out in January for 26,000 yen, so around $250, $270 around there for that. As far as the list price goes for this one, of course, it looks very shiny, it looks very nice, very highly detailed. It should make a good set if you already have the Metal Build Freedom, for example, to go along with this. I assume like some of the weapons things will probably be compatible with them in case you wanted to swap them for some reason, but uh, basically... It looks very cool and like the backpack can come off and you can do all that cool stuff with its backpack, but that should be a lot of fun. And then we also have a new high-res kit coming out, sort of. It's partly new. It's the high-res Gundam Astray Red Frame a Powered Red, which is the version of the Astray Red Frame that has the big, giant, massive arms. So this is going to be coming out in March of next year for 16,000 yen. No announcement yet uh, so far regarding the, I think it's called the 150 meter blade or something like that. Anyway, that super gigantic blade that it has, a uh, super gigantic sword. Uh, there was for the, I think it was like the, not the metal build, was it for the metal build or something? There was, they made a special thing for it where it was like just like the handle of the blade because the blade would just be like too long. Uh, but I can uh, imagine they might do something like that for the high res kit as well, release some sort of, some version of the gigantic sword, uh, but I don't know if they will or not. But anyway, this kit does look pretty cool if you like that version of the Astray. Then getting into some P-Bandai stuff, we had an announcement just recently of some P-Bandai kits that are on the way from the new Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation Code Fairy, which will be a new video game coming out, and so there's going to be some new kits, some new P-Bandai kits coming out in relation with that. Uh, apparently they're called the Black Rider, White Rider, and the Ifrit Jaeger, I've, but I've seen different names for them online, so I'm not sure 100% that those are the correct names for those. 
Uh, but they look pretty interesting. The Efreet Jaeger, obviously just going to be another version of the HGUC Efreet, uh, of which there are many now at this point, and they're very great, so definitely a cool kit. I'm looking forward to that. The Black Rider and the White Rider look a lot more unique, uh, so those will be very interesting, especially the White Rider there with the whole crown thing going on looks very interesting. So I've seen a very small, short bit of video that came out from the video game showing the, the kit, the, not the kits, showing the mobile suit designs very briefly, and they look pretty interesting. Uh, I, honestly, I think probably the one that looks most interesting to me, aside from the Efreet, which I just love all the versions of the Efreet, uh, is the Black Rider actually kind of looks more interesting to me. It has this kind of uh, Jim Sniper sort of feeling to that. It looks very cool. Other P-Bandai news, P-Bandai Master Grade Shin Musha Gundam uh, Sengoku Nojin Kuroku Oyoroi, kind of a tongue twister of a name there, coming out on January for 9,500 yen. It's been a while since we've seen a variation of this. There's been a couple different versions of this kit to come out. This new one does look very cool. Of course, it has a new kind of uh, back drop for it, that kind of background piece that it has, that's new, aside from just like the general color swap of the kit. Otherwise, I'm not sure if this really has too much in the way of like new parts. It looks like mostly just a color swap for this. It also has a new set of decals for making that uh, pattern on some of the parts of the design. You'll have just a sheet of water side decals for making that. So kind of similar like the Master Grade High New Verka, how you have the decals for the fin funnels to make the gradient effect on them. Looks like it'll be similar to that. Those will be tricky decals to put on with them being big, massive decals that wrap around entire sections of armor. Probably better off painting those, but that particular pattern does not necessarily look that easy to paint either, so I don't know about that. But it should be an interesting release. Uh, there is also the P Bandai HG Gundam Esculapius, which is coming out in January for 3600 yen. I'm very excited about this because, as I've been saying, over the past year or so that they've been releasing different versions of the Geminas that I am very excited to be getting some new kits from G-Unit because I like a lot of the designs, but the Geminas is the one that I particularly don't really like all that much. So I had my fingers crossed that they would do something other than the Geminas, and it looks like they are going to be doing at least one more, at least the Esculapius here, which they're doing, which has a special place in my heart as well because it was the original HG of that uh, was one of the very first kits that I ever built. Uh, 20 years ago or so. So I am very much looking forward to that. It looks very cool. Some new changes to the design look really nice. It includes the two beam rifles that uh, the original version of the kit didn't, didn't have. And probably the most exciting aspect of this is not only are we getting this cool kit, but now that kind of opens the door that what's going to be the next one? Are they going to do like the low booster or the Hydra or I don't know what they're going to do next, but we can assume that they will continue on and do probably at least one or two more. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Then we also had the sort of like soft announcement of the P Bandai RE100 Gundam Lindworm. I don't think there's been any uh, detailed information released about this yet as far as the release date or the price, but basically it's a variation of the RE100 Bau, giving it this much more Zeta Gundam feel with like a Zeta Gundam style kind of head and some designs, uh, changes in the design that make it more like a mix of like the Bau mixed with the Zeta Gundam and does look pretty cool. It was featured in the recent issue of Gundam Hobby Life magazine. I did a review of that magazine over on my channel, so if you guys missed that video, you can check that out, but that's where uh, this design originally kind of uh, was, uh, was featured. But now getting into like a, a very small amount of news related to some standard release stuff, we finally got release information for the Master Grade Dom and Rick Dom. They're not really calling it the version 1.5, but for our understanding, we can just refer to them as the version 1.5. So it's not a full version 2.0 as most of the kit is still original to just the same 1.0 release. There's just been some small changes made which are basically adapted from the release of the P-Bandai Dwaj and Dwaj Kai. They updated some parts of the joints and frames and things to make those kits a little bit nicer. And now they're bringing those back into the original Dom and Rick Dom kits. So those will be coming out. The Rick Dom, obviously the space version of the Dom. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of difference between them, uh, between the main kits. The bottom of the feet are different, the back skirt is a slightly different, and the weapon loadout is different. That's going to be kind of the main thing. So if you don't want to get both, and you kind of you only want to just get pick up one of those, you have to probably the main thing to consider would be just be the weapons. Like the space type has the beam bazooka, and the bazooka, and uh, I think the other uh, beam, the heat sword, heat rod, I think it's called anyway, and then. Uh, the regular Dom has kind of a lot more weapons, but nothing quite as big as the Beam Bazooka. So if you wanted something really big, go for the Rick Dom. And that's probably the one that I'm going to be picking up. But I do like with the Master Grade Dom, which is just the regular Dom, how it has a lot of different weapon options included in there. So that one's also cool. I do really like the Rakuten Bazooka. So, 
some cool options at least. And the last thing to talk about here today is just some stuff related to Gundam G-Frame. So G-Frame Full Armor Box Volume 1 is going to be coming out in February for 5,900 yen. That's for a box of 10 of these, so like the full set. It's going to be including the Freedom Gundam, the Dual Gundam Assault Shroud, the Gundam Alex, and the New Gundam. So all of these will be in that set. So those all look very nice, and of course if you guys are unfamiliar with the G-Frame, there's like kind of two parts of that. Uh, there'll be a one box which will include just a static frame and all the armor, and then the second box will include a movable frame and some other weapons and accessories and things like that. So you kind of need this set to get the full effect of those. Uh, but you should have all of those included in a single box. There is going to be some P-Bandai stuff coming out as well, so there's a P-Bandai Gundam G-Frame F. FA uh, EX01, so uh, the first in a EX series of these, uh, is going to be the Camphor and Gunnam Alex Chubum Armor set. So obviously, that's pretty self-explanatory name. Uh, this one's coming out in February as well for 3,900 yen. So it's just the Camphor, uh, which does look really cool, and it has a bunch of weapons and accessories for that. And then it also gives you all of the Chobam Armor for the Alex Gundam. So like the regular version of the Alex in the FA Volume 1 does not include all of the armor you'll have to get it with this set, which is a pretty cool opportunity to do that if you're a fan of that series. And then finally, BP Bandai Gundam G-Frame FA Unicorn Gundam Perfectibility. So the Perfectibility is coming out and no release date or price announced for this yet. We just only have this single image of that. It's just kind of like a teaser, but uh, the Gundam Perfectibility uh, version of the Unicorn is going to be coming out as well, I would assume, probably then in March or April sometime. A little bit later, but probably not too much later. So if you're a fan of the G-Frame line, Bandai does seem to be chugging along pretty well with those. Uh, they're pretty fun. I, I do like them. There's some that I definitely like more than others, like design-wise, and they are kind of expensive for what they are, considering you can normally like get a, a like a good solid HG kit for around the same price and these are like a little bit smaller, uh, much more basic and they just don't have very much part separation but they're cool. There's definitely things to like about them uh, so I have kind of mixed opinions about them but I enjoy them well enough but what are you guys thoughts about the G-Frame line? Are you guys collecting them at all or haven't dabbled into those at all yet. I'm interested to know what you guys think about those. But that's all the news for today, guys. Uh, if there's anything that I missed, of course, do feel free to let, tell me down in the comment section below. I'll uh, include that in the next episode, assuming that it's still time relevant. But as always, guys, just make sure you check out the live streams that we do here on the channel every two weeks. Adam and I do the live stream where we answer your guys' questions and we give away. It's usually a premium Bandai Master Grade kit. So a big uh, kit to give away every two weeks usually is how that goes. And like I said, if you missed the announcement of the new Gundam Artifact contest, please do check that out. And hopefully you guys will enter. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. As always, thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for shopping uh, with us. And of course, the link will be down in the video description below if you guys want to just go there and check out some of this stuff. Uh, the P-Bandai stuff, obviously not, but the other stuff and a bunch of other Gundam and everything else, Kodobuki and all that, we've got on pre-order there for you guys, all the new stuff coming out and then everything else in the store. You guys can check that out, of course. So thank you all for checking out today's video and we'll see you all next time. Have a great day. Bye, guys.